Uh, I would like now to uh, uh, ask uh, Carl Widerquist from his perspective as an active member of the Executive Committee uh, of Bien uh, to give us his view of the work, uh, the ongoing work on the work in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. I guess we should have had Philippe go last. <laughs> He's, uh, I think his will be the most interesting speech. Uh, I'm uh, here just to sum up a few things. I have uh, uh, first uh, uh, one small announcement. Uh, there was somebody in the last session, the one where we had two presentations uh, on Brazil. Someone there uh, borrowed one of these translation machines from Eduardo, um, and then they, they didn't. Uh, they lost each other and weren't, weren't able to give it back. And so, no, so now Eduardo can't get his passport back and can't return to his homeland until this is returned to him. So if you're that person, if you could please... Yeah, it was in room... Okay. Otherwise, maybe he'll be applying for citizenship here in Germany. Uh, <laughs> And speaking of, uh, speaking of translation, uh, we, we thanked the uh, student translators, but also uh, the regular translators are still back there and still at work, and uh, we should thank them as well. I appreciate them. I, I don't know how they do it when we're using this uh, esoteric... Uh, academic ease, all this language that we're using. I'm using words that I had to look up myself to figure out what word I wanted to, what, what word would use here, and, and making up words like degrowth and stuff, and they have to translate that. So uh, I, I thank them very much. Uh, I would also uh, like to thank uh, uh, Lu Louise Hogg, who is, uh, who is unable to be here from the executive committee, and to someone else who's been mentioned several times, but uh, Dorothy Schutzbasta, who's been one of the primary organizers of this conference and who was unable to make it this weekend, so you might not be aware of all that she's done, but Ingrid and I have worked closely with her, with her uh, for two years while she and Raymond and others were putting this conference together. And I'd really like to thank Dorothy quite a bit. Uh, now... <laughs> I also uh, have in my back pocket a message uh, that comes from Namibia. Bishop Kamita of, uh, uh, of Namibia, who is one of the principal forces behind the Namibian pilot project that we've heard so much about. Uh, uh, I, he, I, Eduardo put me on the phone with him yesterday, and next thing I know, I was taking notes for a message from him. So here's a message for all of us from Bishop Kamita. What you are doing there is the future of the world, the future of justice and peace, what we cannot keep quiet at all. Although the Namibians can't be with you, what you are doing is close to our hearts and close to the hearts of all people who love justice. Bishop Now, my role here is more of a, an, an informational role. Uh, I want to tell you a few things that are going on on basic income, uh, mostly about what BN is doing, but I will let you know one thing that, uh, that I'm involved in, so it's very important to me. Uh, about five years ago, an, an editor from Palgrave Macmillan Publishers approached me a, a, about a proposal, and I thought she was going to ask me to do one book on basic income, and she asked me to do to edit a book series, um, and with two to three books a year, I thought that was impossible. But we launched the series this year with five books, uh, five books on basic income, all from one publisher, uh, that are all on the uh, that are all on the display table downstairs, in, including some books that, uh, well, of course I co-edited two of those, those I especially like, but some, some other books in the series that 
Um, our special good Simon Birnbaum has a very good work on justice that's discussed here at this conference that's out on the series. Richard Caputo on the politics of basic income. And uh, uh, we're also, one of the things that I'm doing here is uh, looking for authors who are interested in writing books on basic income. And uh, so if you're interested in the series, if you want to know more about it, please, please see me. See me here at the conference or send me an email. Now, uh, I have been the co-chair of BN for the uh, for the last for the last three terms, along with uh, along with Ingrid, and uh, I've I've seen important developments in it in these years. Both of us are running for re-election at the GA meeting this afternoon. If you would like to, to come, I hope you'll vote for us. Um, and uh, I've seen uh, several important developments in it. Uh, Basic Income Studies is the first academic journal focusing on basic income research. It's interdisciplinary, but it's all about basic income. It has economics, sociology, philosophy, political science, uh, and many other disciplines in the book, but every paper is directly related to basic income. We've had a recent trans transition. Uh, Jim Mulvale and Louise Hogg are the, are the editors who took over this year. They will be giving uh, an essay prize for the best English language essay at this, uh, at this conference. We can't give a prize for the best essay in this conference because it's an English language journal and we have no capacity to translate. So all, the best we can do is, is, to, uh, is uh, for the English language papers. If you have a paper in English that you're interested in, uh, that you're interested uh, in publishing in a good academic journal that focuses on basic income, uh, basic income studies, you should, you should look into that this for, submit, for submitting your, your papers. Uh, it, is, uh, it is, I think, important for the academic end of the debate on basic income. The basic income issue is so complicated and gets into so many different areas. We need all kinds of people in the movement. We need political leaders, and we need, we need grassroots political activists, and we need and we need academics who are carrying on the discussion in, in those sorts of areas. And, and basic income studies is one thing that's holding, that is doing that. This is, basic income stu studies is largely sponsored by BN. BN has given it um, some seed money to get started, as has Red Rent Abasica, the, uh, the Spanish basic income network. Uh, now, but for the very other end of journals that focus on basic income, the non-academic news journals focusing on basic income, the uh, Basic Income European Network started its newsletter back in 1988. Um, and at that time, uh, at that time, newsletters used to be produced on this thing called paper. And they were sent out by mail. People would actually, they'd actually get a physical copy of this in the mail. It would come in the mail. And it went that way for, I think, over 10 years until they finally, and that when it was called at that time the, the basic income newsletter, because uh, it literally came in a letter. Uh, but then uh, it, it, and the original editor was Philippe von Parijs, who's sitting over there. Um, and he edited it for uh, just a mere 16 years. Uh, and in, and he, for, he saw it through the transition to what it became the basic income news flash when it went, when it went onto the internet and was sent out by email, as we all, as we all know publications go out today. Uh, and uh, he edited it for this time. And then um, in 2004, he passed on the editorship of... Uh, the news flash to Yannick Thunderboat, who's sitting out there somewhere. Yannick, Yannick over there. And Yannick is partially stepping down this year as news flash editor. He's come to the end of his, the end of his term as news flash editor since 2000, for eight years, four terms as news flash editor. And he's stepping down, but he's not leaving as a, as a writer. He's leaving as the editor but he's, he's going to be, still be a contributing writer. Uh, and, and now, I have some experience in this field because uh, when the U.S. Basic Income Guarantee Network got started back in, 
back in the year uh, 2000, I volunteered to write the newsletter for the U.S. Basic Income Guarantee Network, and it was much later in history than 1988, so we went directly to uh, email only, and I have been editing that for the last 12 years. And last year, in 2011, Yannick and I, with help of Jörg Drescher and several others, started a news website on basic income called Basic Income News. And if you want up-to-date information about what's going on on basic income around the world, go to basic income news, uh, binews.org. BINews.org. It's worldwide news on basic income, sponsored by BN and its national affiliates around the world. Many, uh, there, are, there are 17, hopefully soon there'll be 21 or 22 affiliates. Uh, we'll see at the meeting today when some new applications come in. And we have about five of them participating right now, and we're hoping to widen participation. It started as a joint effort between BN and US Big, and it's grown. To, uh, it's grown now to uh, a, uh, it's grown now to about five or six of the affiliates are officially participating. We hope to get more and more of them participating. And so uh, uh, there are going to be some changes at the news flash and the news and B BI news that we're hoping to integrate these much more. For the last, for the last year and a half, the newsletter and the news flash have been, have been working in parallel. And uh, I should also announce that I have been nominated um, to run to replace, to replace Yannick as the editor of the news flash. So I'll be the, if I succeed in winning the election at the GA this afternoon, I will be the third editor of the BN news flash. And our goals for the News Flash in this term is to further integrate it with the BI News website and to integrate it with the various newsletters of any of the affiliates who wish to join. So if you are a, if you uh, work for one of the affiliates, if you're uh, a member of one of the affiliate organizations, uh, we're hoping to integrate the, the BI News website and the BN News Flash uh, with with newsletters of, so there'll be a different edition for each of the, uh, the member countries. I'll be editing both the BN News Flash and the U.S. big edition of the BN News Flash, and we'll hope we get others involved. So uh, if you are involved with one of the national affiliates, please see me about integrating our newsletters and integrating the news website, but also the BN News, the BI News website, binews.org, is, is completely volunteer run. No one is getting paid anything for what they're doing here. And we have right now about five volunteers who are writing all the news that you see on BI News. And we can use some more volunteers. We can use, we can use volunteers to write for BI News. We also need copy editors, people with HTML skills, uh, all, uh, um, all sorts of people to help us out with this. Please uh, send me an email or go to the website and find the contact information. We need people to help. It's, it's a lot of fun. You get to be up to date on what's going on in Mongolia and Namibia and, and in rural Brazil, what's going on in basic income. When I started writing about uh, the, the basic income newsletter uh, for US Big in 2000, I thought there can't be news about this policy that, that that isn't even in place and uh, hardly anywhere in the world. There can't be news on this to fill a newsletter. But sure enough, if you start to follow it, there's news happening all around the world. There's so much news happening, you can barely keep up with it. Um, there is a new proposal in this country or something like something, a step towards b b basic income in another country. There's things happening. So there's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to follow up on that. And, uh, and it's uh, also a good way to get some writing credits and so forth. So I hope to get everybody further involved. Now, the last thing that I want to say is that after this meeting, uh, there's going to be a lunch break. And after the lunch break, there's going to be at 3 o'clock the GA meeting, which is happening right across the hall in the room that I can't pronounce, but it's right across the hall. Latsa. Uh, Latsa. Is that right? Okay. In that room, uh, right across the hall at 3 o'clock, 
Um, anyone can attend, but you have to be a life member of Bien to vote. So I hope that you'll all attend, and I hope to, and that uh, all of those of you who are life members will, will discuss and vote the issues, and I will see you all there, and I'll turn it back to you. Ja, vielen Dank, Karl. Ähm, wir hatten jetzt ein bisschen Unruhe, weil wir haben irgendwie ein Organisationsproblem gehabt. Wir haben eine, äh, eine Überschneidung mit einer Pressekonferenz, die um äh, 1 Uhr jetzt parallel stattfindet. Deshalb müssen sich unsere armen äh, Kollegen von Bien äh, ein bisschen aufteilen, äh, wer wohin geht. Ähm, ich bitte jetzt äh, Ingrid van Niekerk sozusagen die äh, 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 Geschichten äh, noch zu vervollständigen, die äh, aus Sicht von dem Bien Exekutiv Komitee ist. Sie ist äh, andere aktive Mitglied im Bien Exekutiv Komitee und äh, wird Ihnen sicher noch weiter interessante Dinge zu berichten haben. Danke. So apologies, I'm not Louise Haag. Louise Haag was going to speak to you about the basic income um, editing work that she does, and because she's not available to be here, um, I'm going to speak a little bit on some of the things um, that I've noticed and, and seen. And I wanted to reflect on the idea that this was about pathways to basic income, and I come from a developing country, and the pathways in terms of a developing country is vastly different from the pathway, I think, that a developed country will take in terms of developing a basic income. Most of the work that Carl and others do is on basic income, but I'm at a way different level. My work um, um, at an NGO in South Africa is about uh, um, working on cash transfers, designing, implementing, um, helping to do impact evaluations of various types of cash transfers. And so what role I can play with basic income is that I can help to spread the word about how to universalize these basic incomes. And I think that brings us to the basis of when we need to start with the basic income. No conditionality and universal. And so one of the things we do, we, we try to, to figure out whether it's the right thing and it's the right thing at the right time for that particular country to introduce a universal cash transfer. And incredibly, many of these are being introduced in developing countries in Asia and in Africa, and they're mostly done for children. So you will find a geographical targeting within a specific area, a universal target, uh, 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 sorry, it's called geographical targeting, but it means it's universal within that specific region, within that specific geographical space. And so they're beginning to get very comfortable with this idea of universalizing basic um, cash transfers which I hope one day will build up in these developing countries to a space where we can see it move from the region to the province to maybe the country in, as far as these cash transfers are concerned. And in South Africa, we have this. We can see the progressive realization where uh, when Mandela came out of prison, he, he asked for a, um, a child support grant up to the age of seven, and now we have that up to the age of 12, and then it was 14, and now it's up to the age of 18. So all children, it's still means tested, but all poor children at least are receiving a child support grant to, up to the age of 18. But let me take you back to um, some of the work that I do. So in these training courses that I do, and bear with me, I'll just be five minutes, I have a little story for you. In these training courses that I do, one of the biggest questions that we keep getting asked is, how do you finance this? How do you finance this universal cash transfer? And I, I'm so tired of saying, you know, you need to think of the tax policies, you need to think of the growth of your economy. And I say, it's a Thursday afternoon, and I say to people, let's put away the books. Let's just play a little game. And so I divide the group, one half, and into another half. And I say, over here, here is your tax papers. Please decide on a tax regime for your country. Five of you are in a country, five of you are in a country, five of you are in a country. One of you will have a high income, two of you will have a middle income, and three of you will have a low income. And I do that the same on the other side of the room. One side of the room has a targeted system, and the other side of the room has a universal system. And I say, calculate the tax rate that you would like to pay in your country. 
Okay, the calculated tax rate, the targeted group, and the one that's got the universal program, they calculate the tax rate, and they get confused about who's supposed to receive the benefit, because now they have to pay out the full benefit as a universal cash transfer of some sort, like a BI, a basic income. And the people over there will calculate, and they will have um, maybe 10%, and the people over here will calculate, and they'll say maybe 20%. And then they figure it out, and then I say, okay, let's do this again. Now you can change the tax rate. And lo and behold, the people in the targeted group will go down from 10% taxes down to 5% taxes, and the people in the universal group will go from 20% taxes to 30 to 40 or to 50% taxes paying in that country. And I come back and I say, oh my goodness, why? Why are you doing this? And it's all about self-interest, because one of the assumptions I make right at the beginning, I say to them, when you are calculating your taxes, you are considering self-interest, okay? You must act in your own interest. And look how things are. When you do have a universal system, it seems that people are prepared to pay higher taxes. When you have a non-universal system, a, a targeted system, people will want to pay lower taxes. And then I say, one more thing. Okay, everybody, you can go live in any country you wish to live. It's amazing. Three quarters of the people from that room end up on this side of the room. And I am blown away. I'm completely blown away. And it really just comes down to a few things. And one of the things is that the middle class actually benefit more when there is a universal system. And so they are prepared to negotiate within the group to make sure that that happens, because the poor people benefit, but the middle class also benefits. There will occasionally be a few people who are the wealthiest, and then they will go form their own little country over there, and they'll be, you know, the Cayman Islands or somewhere where they flee. But there will always be a few of them who stay in the universal countries. And I ask them, why do you stay in the universal countries? And they say, I want to live in a country where there is justice. And so, and so I am astounded every time by this game. And I would like to share this game with some of the activists um, so that you can begin to play this game and you can see what kind of effects this game has on people. And I was reminded by that, particularly by something that Gotz Werner said the other day. He was saying, and let me just find my notes, he said, you have to think first, and then you have to feel, and then you have to take action. And I think we think too much. We're all in the head, and we don't feel enough, and there are many of us that take action, but not everybody. And I think if, if we take this into consideration, the heart needs to be convinced before we will be able to make any change. These are small things but they can make such a big difference. You need to not only appeal to the academic brain, but you need to appeal to the heart. So find ways in your activism to be able to do that. And lastly, I just want to reflect um, for a moment um, on what's happening in India, and I, and I was reminded by that. Um, um, Carl was saying here too um, that Bishop Kameta had said, what, do you, what you are doing is close to our hearts, and close to the people who love us. Again, coming back to the heart, it's ironic that you have a heart sphere program which is not universal and unconditional, and so maybe you need to do something about that and take us back to the heart. But I want to just end with um, one more thing that I, I thought about as far as the um, Indian connection that we have now, the pilots that are happening in India. The members of the Sewa who saved with us their successes and their challenges in these pilots and comes back to words that Gandhi had used, and he said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. So thank you very much. Ja, vielen Dank, Ingrid. Ich glaube, das war die richtige Message zur richtigen Zeit. 
äh, auch mal ein bisschen mehr <lacht> Herz einzubringen. Ähm, ich möchte jetzt äh, als letzten Redner äh, meinen Kollegen im Netzwerkrat äh, Matthias Blöcher bitten, äh, die Perspektive äh, jetzt aus unserer deutschen Sicht äh, zu beleuchten und äh, was da uns zum Beispiel so bevorsteht in nächster Zeit. Ja, ähm, das ist immer schwierig, ne? zurückzuschauen, was sind die Ergebnisse von äh, so einer Veranstaltung, die so vielfältig äh, war. Was ich sehr, sehr spannend finde, ist, wir haben uns ja in den vier Tagen so ein bisschen verlaufen. Jetzt zum ersten Mal sieht man zumindest von hier oben, wie viele Leute wirklich da waren. Also wir haben uns ja ganz gut aufgeteilt. Also wir schauen auf wirklich vier tolle, ereignisreiche Tage zurück. Einmal den Pre-Conference Day, dann die drei Konferenztage, aber auch natürlich nicht zu vergessen die äh, Aktionstage, die gelaufen sind. Ähm, noch zweieinhalb Zahlen dazu, weil es waren 450 Teilnehmer in etwa hier, darunter 150 Referenten äh, und insgesamt äh, eben Teilnehmer aus 29 Ländern. Das finde ich schon ähm, sehr, sehr beeindruckend. Und wir wollen natürlich auch nicht die 50 ähm, Helferinnen und Helfer vergessen, die an unterschiedlichen Stellen sich eingebracht haben, um das überhaupt zu ermöglichen. Ähm, genau so. Das inhaltliche Angebot insgesamt, denke ich, war recht breit. Es sind sehr, sehr viele Papiere eingereicht worden, wir hatten unzählige Workshops und ähm, soweit man das selber eben mitbekommen hat, ist es auch wirklich rege genutzt worden, um in den Austausch zu gehen, das Gespräch zu suchen, auch Diskussionen zumindest ein Stück weit äh, zu führen. Ähm, und es ist ja eben schon gesagt worden, natürlich waren die Pausen sicherlich genauso wichtig wie das, was auch in den einzelnen Räumen gelaufen ist. Ähm, wir sind ein Netzwerk ne, und ich denke, viele haben das genutzt, um tatsächlich diese Netzwerktätigkeit da aktiv auszuüben, auch in den Pausen. Also da, ich denke, das war eine super Gelegenheit, wirklich mit, mit vielen Aktivisten noch mal ein bisschen Kraft zu tanken hier nicht so, äh, und, und ein bisschen aufzutanken für, für die Welt draußen, für unsere Aufgabe, die wir dann später haben. Ich möchte versuchen, jetzt kurz und knapp in, in drei Punkten vielleicht ein bisschen zu überlegen, was waren wirklich so die... Ähm, Kleine Punkte, die wir mitnehmen. Zum einen denke ich, dass wir, dass eine wichtige Geschichte hier war, dass wir den Austausch zwischen Wissenschaft, Aktivisten und auch Praktikern geschafft haben. Es ist also kein reiner Wissenschaftskongress gewesen, das ist ja oft auch am Anfang so ein bisschen angesprochen worden, sondern wir haben, denke ich, dann eine vielfältige Austauschmöglichkeit gehabt. Ein weiterer Punkt, das ist schon bei Philipp etwas angeklungen, dass wir feststellen mussten, dass der Themenkreis vom Grundeinkommen sich erweitert hat, also dass wir wirklich Themen haben, die, die zwingend mit dazu gedacht werden müssen. Es ist genannt worden Wachstum, Entwicklung. Ich denke aber auch die Frage der Geschlechtergerechtigkeit, also das von Gender Mainstreaming, ist, nimmt, nimmt zu und auch die Menschenrechtsfrage war in verschiedenen Workshops sicherlich sehr, sehr wichtig. Also ich denke, da müssten wir in Zukunft das erstmal als Auftrag nehmen und da auch weiterdenken, weg von dem Instrument allein. Der Kongress hatte den Anspruch, Wege zum Grundeinkommen, Pathways to Basic Income. Was wir feststellen mussten, sicherlich die, sind die Ausgangsbedingungen in den jeweiligen Ländern sehr, sehr unterschiedlich. Und es ist eine Zeit lang hier, es gab eine Diskussion zu Pilotprojekten, wir haben Brasilien, wir haben Indien uns anschauen können, ein Stück weit. Also man kann vielleicht festhalten, dass man Pilotprojekte, vielleicht auch Ausgangspunkte, Keimzellen braucht. Und diese Keimzellen können doch schon sehr unterschiedlich sein, je nach der Ausgangssituation in dem jeweiligen Land. Die Frage ist dann zum Beispiel für Deutschland, was könnte hier eine solche Keimzelle sein? Das kann natürlich ein lokales Projekt sein. Es ist aber vielleicht auch die Möglichkeit anzufangen, mit die Keimzelle bei, bei Kindern zu legen. Sagen, okay, man nimmt das als Ausgangspunkt. Oder ältere Menschen oder vielleicht auch die Sanktionsfreiheit. Das war eben auch schon so ein Thema. Ich denke, das wäre wär so ein nächster Schritt auf dem Wege zum Grundeinkommen. Das haben wir so ein bisschen festgehalten. Ähm, jetzt, äh, Philipp hat das eben ja schon die äh, drei Kriterien von Bienn nochmal angesprochen. Das war gut. Äh, es ist aber bekannt, dass das deutsche Netzwerk hat ja vier Kriterien. Also wir haben den individuellen Rechtsanspruch, wir haben 
die, das Wegfallen von einer Bedürftigkeitsprüfung und eben auch kein Arbeitszwang und was nun hinzukommt, dass wir eben bei uns festschreiben, dass wir eine existenzsichernde Höhe eben um eine gesellschaftliche Teilhabe zu ermöglichen benötigen. Das haben wir bei Bien so in dieser Form nicht. Und in der ersten Reflexion haben wir gesagt, okay, es wäre, wenn man das so ein bisschen geguckt hat, was in den, in den Workshops und in, gelaufen ist, die Armutsdebatte ist wirklich auch einfach ein sehr, sehr wichtiges Thema. Und ähm, einen wirklich realen Freiheitsgewinn kann man, das wollen wir alle, kann man nur erzielen, wenn also ein Grundeinkommen tatsächlich auch armutsfest ist. Von daher würden wir PN anregen, zu prüfen, inwiefern man und in welcher Form man diesen Aspekt noch mit dazu nehmen könnte. Ich denke, das werden wir nachher auch noch tun. Aber das, ich glaube, das wäre eine Möglichkeit, da eine gewisse Entwicklung eben auch hinzubekommen. So, jetzt abschließend. Was, was hat dieser Kongress, was ist die für Deutschland gebracht, was ist die lokale Bedeutung? Ähm, wir haben alle die Bundestagswahl natürlich vor uns und ich hoffe, dass das Netzwerk, aber auch alle Teilnehmenden ähm, dafür sorgen werden, dass kein Kandidat im nächsten Jahr mehr an dem Thema vorbeikommen wird. Dass sie sich alle positionieren müssen und sagen, wie stehe ich dazu? Wir müssen das noch verstärkter in die Öffentlichkeit in die Öffentlichkeit tragen und versuchen, auch diese Wahl aktiv zu nutzen, damit es wirklich auch zum Thema wird. Ähm, ähm, und da, da reicht nicht ein Netzwerk, sondern da sind wir wirklich alle hier aufgefordert und ich, das wäre auch mein Schlusssatz gewesen. Ich möchte mich bedanken. Ja, vielen Dank, Matthias. Ähm, wir haben, glaube ich, auch äh, Mikrofone am Tisch liegen. Ich würde nämlich gerne noch eine Frage an äh, unsere drei Repräsentanten hier stellen. Schlicht und einfach, was glauben Sie, was glaubt ihr, äh, auf welchem Bien-Kongress werden wir das erste Land der Welt mit einem Grundeinkommen verkünden können? Test, test, test. Yeah. I'm only a philosopher, so I, uh, I can say what must be, but not what will be, and even less when it will be. So I can tell you in which direction, that's my job, is, uh, my, what I'm paid for, I'm, uh, I'm say, I can tell you in which direction we need to go, and, uh, but I'm not going to make a forecast. Now, um, Sometimes, nevertheless, tactically, it may be a good idea to give dates and indeed to give over-optimistic dates uh, in order to activate things. But personally, I have a different strategy, which is that I'm a, a methodologically a pessimist. That is, I think, uh, I convince myself that uh, a number of things will not happen soon. And if you do that, Life is full of good surprises. I like to be an optimist. I'm not a philosopher. I'm an activist. Um, I don't know. Um, I would like to believe, and I would, you know, like to quote Eduardo in this lifetime. I think we have to think about in this lifetime. And I think more and more so with the world, of will, the world of work changing, I think, and that happening so dramatically um, over the past few crises that capitalism has had since the mid 80s. And those crises are getting narrower and they're getting more intense. And so I think something has to shift and something has to change. And so within that space, I think there is movement and it is up to us to create and improve on that space for movement. So take up the challenge and be active.
Ich denke, manchmal muss es ja immer erstmal ein bisschen schlechter werden, bevor es besser wird. Ich hoffe nicht zu schlecht. Ich, meine Hoffnung, vielleicht bin ich da auch Optimist, besteht darin, dass wir jetzt, dass die Krise, die wir so haben, weniger jetzt auf eine, wegen der ökonomischen Gründe, sondern einfach was so im, im Kopf und in den Bauch, im Bauch der Menschen passiert, dass das eine Chance ist, um tatsächlich einen, einen Umschwung im Denken zu bekommen. Da haben wir das Herz wieder. Also ich, ich hoffe, dass, wir, dass es da zum Besseren kommt und dass wir vielleicht schon sehr bald zumindest erste kleine Ansätze, Anzeichen, Keimzellen sehen können. Okay, danke. Also wir haben keine Jahreszahl gehört, äh, sondern äh, Before, wishful thinking. Mr. Gottsberger is going, he needs yeah. to go. Okay, so please, yeah. I need to say a word about the Sure, person. of course. Yes, yeah, please come up and uh, speak. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, no problem. Because... Uh, President Keller from Germany came to Brazil and when he arrived to the Senate and the president of the Senate introduced me to, to President Keller, he said, well, are you Senator Eduard Suplicy? I want to introduce you to my friend who is a member of the delegation here, Mr. Gottsberner. And so we got together He invited me to be here in, in Berlin as well in Karlsruhe, Karlsruhe together with Mohammad Yunus to speak about uh, the microcredit and the basic income to promote entrepreneurship and to eradicate poverty. And so I came. I had a, a very enriched interaction with him and I wanted to say I was so pleased to, to meet him again here and to know that not only, well, in 2008, I knew that uh, DNM had 900 units in Germany and 300 in the neighboring countries. Today I asked him, there are now, if I'm not wrong, 1,300 here and 1,200 uh, in other countries. And at the same time, I see that on that day, he gave me the book, Ein Income for All, that was a bestseller. And now he has an, another book that is also a bestseller. And I would like him to have it in Portuguese as well as in English because I cannot today read in, in Deutsch, but so I want to compliment uh, Mr. Gottswenner in the name of all of us uh, and to say how good it is that a very uh, successful entrepreneur has been persuaded and not only persuaded but he started a campaign as we all of Bian to introduce the basic income, not only in Germany, but in our planet. So I, before he leaves, uh, I wanted to say <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, and If you allow me, uh, with respect to your question, first of all, wh when will the basic income start? Well, let us recognize that it has started already in one of the United States, Alaska. It has, it has a tremendous positive result Alaska has become the most equal of the 50 North American states. Last year, Gini coefficient of the United States was 0.47. In the District of Columbia, the most unequal, 0.533, even higher than that of Brazil, 0.519. And in Alaska, last year was 0.40. This is a tremendous result very positive for our cause. 
Yesterday, Philip Van Paris mentioned that Iran has already a basic income. I don't know all the details. The professor from Iran, is, it, is he him? He left. But, well, I, I haven't had the opportunity to listen to him, but it's already on the way. And finally, with respect, well, we have the Indian experience, the Ochevero experiences, and in Brazil, Santo Antonio do Pinhal, perhaps next year will start with those who are born in, and every year this is the proposal because the law has been approved. But we have approved in 2003 a law to introduce a basic income that was sanctioned by President Lula in January 8, 2004. In, and I would like to tell you, in the National Convention of the National Party, of the Workers' Party in February 2010, it was written and approved by all the delegates, 1,350 delegates to the convention that during, in the same convention that approved President Dilma Rousseff as our candidate, that along her mandate, we would initiate the basic income according to the law. So my proposal, if you think it's a good one, is to invite President Dilma Rousseff to be present at our next Bian Congress two years from now. At the end of her first term, probably she will be a candidate again to tell us how it is the basic income being introduced in Brazil. That's my proposal. Thank you very much, Eduardo. So now I want uh, just to... Uh, in English. Also ich möchte äh, da direkt daran anknüpfen und äh, Francesco Nobrega bitten, kurz äh, hochzukommen, weil äh, sie möchten genau äh, diese Petition einreichen, dass äh, demnächst für alle Neugeborenen in Brasil äh, zumindest ein äh, Schritt in Richtung Grundeinkommen passiert, so ein weiterer Schritt in Richtung eines voll ausgebauten Grundeinkommens. Bitte. So I'm Francisco Nobrega from Brazil, and I just want to call your attention to a petition that is at the table near the entrance. You know, it's to, uh, the petition is to our president, so she will work towards instituting the basic income law that is in the paper still, and the way it, the law says, so it's, it means by steps. And the, the step we choose is a very gradual and important happening. Our newborns, okay, start in 2014, if you hope. Okay, danke vielmals. Äh, jetzt brauchen wir noch ein paar organisatorische Dinge, die äh, langweilig, aber wichtig sind. Ähm, bitte nochmal die Erinnerung, alle Headsets abzugeben. Äh, wir wären sehr unglücklich, wenn jemand am Flughafen steht und hat statt eines Reisepasses äh, ein, einen Kopfhörer. Ähm, das könnte Probleme geben. Ähm, Papers. Äh, Wer immer sozusagen es noch nicht geschafft hat, sein äh, mühsam äh, geschriebenes Paper äh, rechtzeitig einzureichen oder auch immer, die Website wird so wie sie ist bestehen bleiben und äh, wir werden äh, dieses Angebot von äh, Papieren, die eingereicht werden, aufrechterhalten. Wir bitten alle, die noch nicht ihr Papier einreichen konnten, es bis Ende September zu tun, äh, damit wir das dann nochmal an, äh, allgemein bekannt geben können. Das wird also eine in Zukunft eine wichtige Quelle sein können für alle Menschen, die nochmal in Ruhe nachlesen wollen, was sie vielleicht hier nicht äh, mitbekommen konnten, weil man kann bekanntlich nicht in zehn Workshops gleichzeitig sitzen. Ähm, Videos. Äh, es wurden einige auch private äh, Mitschnitte angefertigt, sowohl Videos als auch Fotos. Äh, wir bitten uns, diese zur Verfügung zu stellen äh, über die bekannte Kontaktadresse kontakt.bn2012.de. Äh, wir werden dann in der geeigneten Form auch diese Dokumente auf der ähm, Kongresswebsite zur Verfügung stellen. 
Ähm, war es das so ziemlich? Ähm, ja, Fundsachen. Es sind offensichtlich ein paar Sachen verloren und gefunden worden. Äh, äh, also Leute, die etwas vermissen, möchten sich ins Kongressbüro begeben, um dort ähm, ihre Dinge äh, zu, zurückzubekommen. Äh, ich weiß nicht, ob sich das geklärt hat. Ein Headset ist ja irgendwo anscheinend verliehen worden und es äh, ist nicht ganz klar, ob das inzwischen geklappt hat. Ich hoffe, äh, hat funktioniert. Wunderbar, ist alles in Ordnung. So, dann ähm, ja, komme ich jetzt sozusagen zu einem ganz wichtigen, äh, fast schon Ritual möchte man sagen. Ich möchte einfach ganz kurz äh, allen Menschen danken, die uns geholfen haben, diesen Kongress ähm, durchzuführen. Sie haben das sicher am Rande mitbekommen, was da so alles äh, am Gange war. Da waren also am Check-in äh, zugange zum Beispiel äh, Christa Acker, Alessa Becker, Roswitha Nislein. Ich bitte alle, die äh, anwesend sind noch, äh, sind, äh, einige sind schon abgereist wieder, alle, die anwesend sind, kurz vorzukommen, damit wir auch einen optischen Eindruck davon bekommen, dass doch eine ganze Reihe von Menschen sich bereit gefunden haben, uns hier zu unterstützen. Karin Schreiber am Bücherstand Karina. Ossendorf, Miriam Westermeier im Kongressbüro, Fabian, ähm, den Nachnamen habe ich mir auch irgendwo aufgeschrieben, leider schon wieder vergessen. Fabian, wie war der nochmal? Heppe, genau. Fabian, äh, kommt bitte hier hoch, damit wir euch besser sehen können. Ähm, dann Kopfhörer, äh, bei den Kopfhörern eine sehr aufstressige Aufgabe, Stefan Adler, Philipp Tiber, die können nicht alle kommen, weil die müssen jetzt schon gucken, dass sie die Kopfhörer rechtzeitig äh, abgreifen, bevor die Leute verschwunden sind. Äh, Ron Joschka im Organisationsteam, natürlich Bianca Becker als zentrale äh, Figur, äh, die uns schon seit Jahren äh, behilflich ist, äh, äh, Milena Büchs, äh, Joachim fuchs Algrim, der auch als Mädchen für alles für uns unterwegs war und, und vieles äh, gerettet hat, viele Katastrophen verhindern konnte. In der Redaktion für die Website, äh, die permanent geschrieben haben, äh, jetzt während der äh, laufenden Berichterstattung versucht haben hinzukriegen über den Kongress, N Nathalie äh, Pavlovic, Robert Ulmer, Herbert Wilkins, äh, Übersetzung von Abstracts, die äh, ehrenamtlich erbracht worden ist von äh, Renate äh, Dreher, Norman äh, Kleesattel, ähm, ferner danken wir nochmal ausdrücklich den jetzt noch anwesenden Übersetzerinnen äh, und Übersetzern, ähm, Adrienne äh, Clark-Ott, Irina Sasse, Georg Buchner-Bausewitz, ähm, sowie nochmal für die Koordination und Betreuung Professor Klaus Ziegler mit seinen Assistenten Serena Tiranitza, Thibaut Moya. Äh, ferner danken wir Unterstützern, die uns auch in finanzieller Hinsicht hier weitergeholfen haben. Ähm, die GLS, äh, die Stiftung der GLS Bank, äh, also GLS Treuhand Stiftung, die Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung, ähm, die, die Agentur Jonas und der Wolf, die uns äh, geholfen haben, äh, Corporate Design für, die, für den Kongress zu entwerfen und die Website aufzusetzen. Ähm, Spenderinnen, sehr viele und äh, alle Mitglieder, die also äh, sowohl Beiträge ans Netzwerk äh, gespendet haben, die wir genommen haben, um diesen Kongress mitzufinanzieren, aber auch Beiträge, die direkt für die, von allen, äh, Ihnen, von allen Teilnehmern, äh, die ein wichtiger Bestandteil der Finanzierung dieses Kongresses waren. Viele Menschen haben sich spontan bereit erklärt, fehlende Moderationen zu übernehmen in den, in den Workshops, wofür wir sehr dankbar sind. Ähm, Ebenfalls natürlich alle Referentinnen und Referenten, die sich große Mühe gegeben haben, die zum Teil hohe Reisekosten auf sich genommen haben, Übernachtungskosten. Sie wissen, das äh, Preisniveau ist, äh, ist unglaublich hoch hier in, in München. Trotzdem haben wir es geschafft, so viele Menschen äh, hier äh, so, sozusagen zu Wort kommen zu lassen. Ähm, dann äh, last but least äh, das Personal äh, des Wolf Ferrari Hauses, mit dem wir sehr gut zusammengearbeitet haben, sowohl das technische Personal äh, als auch äh, im, im Büro, die Damen, äh, die, äh, die also sehr kooperativ äh, waren und uns die, äh, unsere Aufgabe sehr erleichtert haben. Ähm, und das Streaming, äh, was äh, permanent ins Internet erfolgt hat. Wir haben ja, wie Sie vielleicht wissen, eine Live-Übertragung ins Internet äh, organisiert. Hier wäre zu nennen Pascal Renault, äh, der hier sehr Erfolgreiches geleistet hat. Ich war leider nicht in der Lage, ihn mir anzugucken, aber ich hoffe, dass die Aufnahmen alle hervorragend geworden sind. Ja, ich denke, damit äh, habe ich, glaube ich, hoffe und alle, die ich jetzt vergessen haben sollte, denen danke ich nochmal ganz ausdrücklich und entschuldige mich, äh, dass sie irgendwie auch es nicht auf meinen Zettel geschafft haben. Ich bitte jetzt um einen äh, freundlichen Applaus für unsere Helferinnen und Helfer.
just, uh, I just want to say one more thing. We tend to forget that there are always people that are getting all the other people to do the work. So um, we've thanked Dorothy many times in her absence, but I think, Raymond, we haven't thanked you enough for all the amazing work you've been doing for all of these months and years, and in particularly this past few days when he had to carry the baton alone. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And also all the members, all the members of the local organizing committee of the network. Okay. Now we're almost, we're almost fast am Ende und we're ganz zum Schluss, uh, sozusagen, also ein bisschen emotionalen Abschluss, uh, auf Bitten von uh, Judith Hafner ihr die Möglichkeit geben, ein selbstverfasstes Gedicht vorzutragen. Ist, ja, ja? Danke. I will start this in English because it is not possible to translate a poem just like that. Uh, I have realized, I've learned one thing as well at this conference. I have understood that basic income is all about freedom. I understood that it is about courage. And I understood that it is actually about human development. And uh, I understood that it needs to be heartfelt in order to be transmitted and in order to actually happen. And there I learned a lot from Werner. Uh, and I just want to finish off with one poem that brings it from the purely human perspective that we are concerned with and that all the people that we are talking to will be concerned with. And there's a hell of a lot of angry and frustrated potential out there that could be turned into a tremendous positive strength if we manage to transmit this heartfelt in the way that Ingrid was describing. And in als Hommage an Herrn Werner und seine kopernikanische Wende nehme ich das Gedicht bitte wenden. In der Welt, wie wir sie kennen, definiert unser Gehalt was wir unser Leben nennen, Essen, Schlafen, Aufenthalt. Wie wir Leben neu gestalten, ist in diesem Denkmodell leider Gottes nicht enthalten. Wer nicht sputet, der wird schnell auf dem Raster fallen und das Raster droht uns allen. Deshalb sputen wir und rennen, anstatt zu verweilen, um einander zu erkennen und am Leben mitzufeilen. Denn ein Mensch muss sich beeilen. Ja, mit einem Grundeinkommen würde dieses Hamsterrad aus den Käfigen genommen und wir stünden auf dem Pfad wirklicher Entscheidung. Will ich Sinn oder Vermeidung? Bin ich mutig oder klein? Bin ich frei oder allein. Was ich bin und was ich lebe, stünde plötzlich in der Schwebe. Wenn wir unseren Zwang entfernen, das sei uns bewusst, müssen wir als Menschen lernen, die befreite Lebenslust neu zu integrieren, uns als Menschen neu zu spüren. Spüren sind wir nicht gewohnt, uns verbindet, was sich lohnt, oder was wir denken. Uns zu spüren, uns zu schenken, wäre das Mandat. Das ist bestenfalls privat. Dieses Leben will mit Wucht zwischen uns pulsieren. Und wie leicht wird es zur Sucht, die wir konsumieren. Leben nach dem Hamsterrad ist für Hamster schwer. Wasser kocht bei 100 Grad, aber hier kocht mehr. Um da wirklich einzutauchen, und das ist ein Segen, werden wir einander brauchen, wie der Wald den Regen. Dieses Neue wird nicht starten und das Alte schwinden, wenn wir aufeinander warten. Nur wenn wir uns überwinden, und uns konsequent in die Herzenskraft begeben, wird uns das, was heute trennt, morgen neu beleben. Diese Kraft aus unseren Herzen 
halten wir noch auf Distanz. Doch mit ihr ist nicht zu scherzen, denn sie will uns und zwar ganz. Leben ist die Leidenschaft, Neues mit vereinter Kraft fließend zu gestalten. Bitte wenden, Weg vom Alten. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, not only Ryman, but all the members, not, uh, but all the members of the local organizing committee. I don't know everybody's names, but there was a committee that uh, a committee of about a half a dozen people who worked very hard over the last year to uh, to put this thing together. And I'd like to thank every every one of them. Thank you very much. And, uh, If you remember earlier, I read a message from Bishop Kamita, one of the uh, main organizers of the pilot project in Namibia. And uh, Eduardo has asked me to remind you that the project is not, is not over yet. They have been, they're still trying to raise funds in order to keep the grant going. And the grant, they've been running out of funds, so the grant has become irregular. Uh, they gave a payment, I think it was in April, and they were unable to give another payment until, until July, but then they made a double payment to make up for that, and they're hoping to make other payments in the future because of all the good that those payments are doing there for the people and to demonstrate how well basic income would work. And Eduardo has asked me to remind that we can all donate. Um, if, if we can all donate to this project, Uh, Dirk Harmon is here, and Eduardo is, is right there in front and center. Uh, if you have some uh, euros or dollars or Namibian, uh, Namibian what you call it, um, give them to him, and he'll make sure they get to Dirk and get on a plane to Namibia where they'll go directly to help some people. I have already 100 euros. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here. This means about uh, thir 12, 13 dollars. And so uh, any contribution might contribute for the continuation of the basic income family project in Nocevero. Thank you very much. Okay. Vielen Dank. Also, jeder, der Geld hat, wo nicht weiß, wohin damit, bitte sofort an Eduardo wenden und äh, wir haben eine gute Verwendung für, äh, die, für all dieses Geld. Ich, mir bleibt Ihnen noch einmal allen herzlich zu danken, dass Sie gekommen sind, dass Sie uns mitgeholfen haben, aus diesem Kongress einen Erfolg zu machen und hoffentlich ein weiterer Meilenstein auf dem Weg zum Grundeinkommen. Ich wünsche Ihnen einen schönen Nachhauseweg und äh, kommen Sie gut heim. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Auf Wiedersehen.